Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we're joined by Loris De Giovanni, who is the CTO and founder of Sysdig, and Anthony Leverington, who is the country manager for Australia and New Zealand at Sysdig. Sysdig is on a mission to make every cloud deployment secure and reliable. No matter where you are in your journey, they are here to help you understand and defend your cloud and container environment. Loris and Anthony join us today to tell us more about Sysdig and what they're doing in the APEC market. Thank you for both coming along and welcome to the jam. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. Uh, well, let's just get straight into it. Um, Loris, could you give us a um, quick introduction as to what your company does and who your typical customers are? Yeah, Sysdig is a, a market leader in cloud security. Uh, we uh, offer a platform that covers the full life cycle of modern applications. We often uh, articulate these as uh, our product is able to do both shift left so all of the posture that you and, and the security that you need to do in your code and your vulnerabilities and so on, so that your applications that go into production are safe, but we also do shield rights. So once your applications are in production, we protect them, we detect threats, we, we prevent these threats and so on. Um, one thing that makes this the unique is, uh, I mean, we operate in the CNAP market, so that we cloud security market, but our product uh, is unique because uh, we, we define it as real-time CNET because we're able to do, to do detections and, and unveil issues in a matter of seconds while all of the other vendors normally take minutes or hours uh, or sometimes days, you know, to, to, to report the threats. In terms of customers, uh, we have a broad set of customers uh, or, or over 700 in pretty much every vertical because uh, you know we serve companies that uh, adopt cloud uh, strategies and nowadays this is really across verticals but we tend to be strong in you know like financial media healthcare and you know these places where uh, security is important and you know their data is very important well, now, Anthony, what are you currently up to in our region? And could you tell us a little bit about your team and sort of the local activity around here? Oh, no, I'd love to. I think, um, Tom, look, one of the big changes that we've seen over the past few years is that the way people are now building, delivering and maintaining applications is fundamentally different. Um, you know, for example, applications are now being built using DevOps, CICD methodologies, uh, using cloud-based services, um, they might be made up of uh, microservices that talk to each other via discrete uh, APIs. And, and often now they're being built with technology, some of the newer technologies such as Kubernetes and containers. And one of the things I'm finding is I think sec security professionals are now realizing that a new approach is needed uh, when it comes to securing their applications in the cloud. So I guess to answer your question, what we do locally is we spend a lot of time with our customers. We're running educational sessions. Uh, we're running technical workshops essentially helping security professionals navigate a lot of these changes. What, what is interesting is that a common theme that does come out of these sessions is that the, the challenges or domains that security professionals, professionals are concerned about it hasn't really changed. For example, they're still concerned about things such as uh, vulnerability management, uh, configuration management, identity and access management, as well as threat detection. But what has actually changed is the operating context of these domains or challenges. So just to give you an example, uh, when, when your applications are built uh, with technologies such as Kubernetes, um, containers and cloud-based um, services, your, your applications now have this uh, expanded attack surface across all of these domains. And I think this is really, um, really uh, evident by attacks uh, such as Scarlet Hill. And I think consequently, security professionals are now starting to realize that you can no longer look at these things like software vulnerabilities, uh, configuration management, uh, things such as excessive permissions in your environment, uh, as well as runtime threats. You can't look at those in isolation because if you do have an attack that's similar to something like Scarlet Hill, you, you do run the risk of um, uh, you know, not detecting the attack or missing something really big uh, in your environment. Um, you know, one one interesting point that I read recently in one of our, our threat reports is that the the average dwell time for an attack for on-prem environments is now 16 days. So that's actually 16 days um, that an attacker is uh, potentially in your environment before they're actually being detected. So when you also take into account that 
it now only takes about uh, 10 minutes for a bad actor to to launch an attack. Um, you can understand now why why Gartner is now saying that companies need to adopt a, a unified approach to cloud security and threat protection. And um, as Laura mentioned before, this is what the industry is now calling or referring to as CNAP, uh, which stands for Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. Well, now, are you direct to market or do you work with channel partners here? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Because because we're a global company, the, the approach in each region is a little different. Um, for example, in Australia and New Zealand, it's very much channel driven. Whilst what I do find in Australia is that customers uh, typically like to transact direct or or mm-hmm. via one of the cloud, uh, cloud provider marketplaces. Mm-hmm. What is consistent across the globe, though, is our strong partnership and integrations that we do have with the likes of GCP, um, AWS and Azure. Uh, we find that most large organizations are using more than one public cloud. So a common theme that we do see when customers reach out to us is that they're, they're looking for a solution uh, that can provide visibility in terms of security across all of their public cloud environments. Well, now, uh, what sort of demand are you seeing in the market at present? And is it being affected by the economic trends? Yeah, I think all the clouds... Um, it's been around for a long time now. It seems like it's been around for a long time, the cloud. Um, but in reality, what we're seeing is that a lot of organizations are just starting to move out of that early adopter stage. Mm-hmm. So what, what this now means is that customers are now starting to move more material workloads to technologies such as Kubernetes and containers. And I think whilst the benefits of doing that or using those technologies is, is commonly known, uh, it does, however, introduce new security challenges. And what customers are discovering Um, is that their existing tooling doesn't have adequate context or visibility or provide the necessary runtime insights for these newer technologies. To to answer your question around economic trends, it's true that um, we're seeing a lot of customers at the moment that are trying to reduce their costs. And one of the ways they can do this is by uh, reducing their spend on tooling. However, uh, this is actually, in fact, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why customers uh, will adopt Cystic. Uh, for example, uh, Arcos Labs. Now, Arcos Labs are an Australian-founded uh, security platform that provide uh, services to market, security services such as bot protection. Uh, not only did they want better visibility in terms of their security posture, by implementing Cystic, they were actually able to consolidate from six cloud security tools down to one. And this enabled them not only to reduce costs, but also had the additional benefit of uh, actually allowing them to release software at a much faster pace. Well, now, uh, what sort of, uh, I guess for you, Anthony, again, what are your product development teams laser focused on next at Cystic? Yeah, sure. I think Loris... Um, I, I can take this one. Uh, go, go for it, Loris. <laughs> as the city of the company, that's my yeah. intention. <laughs> um, it, the company is uh, really uh, laser focused on... Uh, building a complete platform. Uh, Anthony was just talking about, uh, you know, customers really want to reduce their spend on tooling. And uh, there's really an an opportunity with cloud security to build, you know, a complete platform that can really cover the full life cycle of applications. So uh, there's a lot of pieces and components that have to do with that. And definitely cloud security is becoming more and more a platform play. And uh, that's one of of the missions of uh, of Cisdig. At the same time, it's not only a matter of teaching together, you know, different pieces of functionality so the customer is spending less money, but there's really an opportunity to make security better by leveraging these different pieces of functionality together. Let me give you an example. For example, it's possible to reduce by too many to orders the uh, number of vulnerabilities that development team needs to address when you are able to see exactly which of these vulnerabilities are loaded by the software that is actually running because of a lot of these vulnerabilities maybe are there you know like a library that is sitting in in some container or something like that, but it's never actually loaded you know so by doing that we are really able to offer a product that is well coordinated and, and very effective uh, for the user 
Uh, maybe one other little thing that I want to mention in terms of uh, what we are uh, working on is uh, um, we are really spending quite a bit of time, and me personally, uh, by the way, specifically, on uh, generative AI. So being able to leverage, you know, these modern uh, AI tools like uh, ChatGPT and so on uh, to really um, create an assistant that can make... Uh, operators of, uh, of our product uh, and, uh, uh, and and people that have to deal with cloud security much more effective, lower the entrance barrier and also do prioritization and do high level thinking on behalf of the user and this kind of stuff. We're seeing very exciting results uh, with that. And uh, we have uh, a, an assistant that we're calling Sysdic Sage that uh, we're uh, building to the market these days. A nice little teaser for that early. Thank you, Brian. Uh, well, I guess one final question. Um, if a company or individual wanted to find out more about Sysdig and in any part of the world, uh, what's the best way they can do that? Sure, Tom. Uh, look, uh, people are always uh, more than welcome to uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll, I'll never refuse a, a LinkedIn connection. Um, they can always go to our website. Um, in terms of local events, uh, we're, we're going to be at Acer in Melbourne uh, in October. That's about, I think, four weeks away. Uh, on top of that, we're always running local workshops, uh, educating our customers as to in, how, what these new threats are and, and how to mitigate these new threats. So uh, if anyone's interested in those workshops, again, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, as well as that, uh, you, know, you can search for us in the local meetups in, in your town. We're always uh, participating in, in the local meetups. Awesome. Well, it has been a pleasure having you both on the Jam, Larissa and Anthony, and learning more about Cystic and what you guys are doing in the region. Uh, we look forward to hearing more from Cystic very soon. Thank you. Thank you.